Algebra 1 Lesson 106, we are solving radical equations. So in order to do this, we need to remember our inverse operations. Um, so what are they? If we have something like this and we're trying to solve for x, if I have the square root of x equals 7, what's the inverse of square rooting something? Well, from what we learned when we are squaring something and trying to undo that, it must be squaring. So if I take each side here and I square it, we should be able to get x by itself. So if I take the square root of x times the square root of x, so square root of x squared, then I just get x equals 49. So we need to use these inverse operations. They can be pretty simple, like this one, or even like this one, take um, and square it, and that equals 64. Or we could have something else underneath the radical. Um, but we need to get that radical alone first, and then we can square it. Unfortunately, we can't go ahead and divide by 4 here, um, but we can square it and get 4x is equal to 144, which means I can divide each side by 4 and get x equals, um, what, 36. Okay. All right, so you can try the one with the square root of 2x equals 10. If I were to take this next one and square it, I would get x plus 7 is equal to 121. We can't deal with that 7 until it's out of the radical. And so I subtract 7 from each side and get x is equal to 114. Okay, same with the square root of x plus 2 is equal to 12. So we can see lots of radicands like this. Sometimes though the radical will not be isolated, so we have to isolate it first. So here are some good examples. I need to get that square root of x by itself because if I were to square both sides right now, I would still end up with a radical somewhere. So I need to add five to each side and get the square root of x is equal to 13 so that we can square each side and end up with x is equal to 169. All right, same with that one on the right. We can say, well, I'm going to subtract five from each side and square it to get x is equal to nine. All right, and sometimes um, we have to not just add or subtract to get the radical alone, we have to divide or multiply. So in this case, we need to divide and get the square root of x is equal to seven. So we square each side and get x is equal to 49. All right, and you can try this one on the right side of the page simply as well. All right, now what happens if there are more than just one radical? Well, that's when we have to get them to opposite sides of the equation so that we can square both sides. So this is an example of what it might look like. So we have our radicals each on their own side, and we go ahead and we square them so that we get x plus 2 is equal to 2x plus 4. And now we can go ahead and do our normal operations. So subtracting x from each side and subtracting 4 from each side and we get x is equal to negative 2. And we can see if we were to plug in negative 2 for each of these, I would end up with the square root of negative 2 plus 2, getting me 0, equals the square root of 2 times negative 2, so negative 4 plus 4. Those do work. They each give me 0. It works. Um, you can try it with the right side one, same process goes. But what if we were to check an answer and it didn't make sense? Well, that would be considered an extraneous solution, and that can happen. So let's try something like this. Now you'll notice that this one's going to come out a little bit different, that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and first, though, square each side since we have the radical by itself and we get x minus 1, and be careful, this is a binomial squared, so we get x squared minus 6x plus 9, which means that we need to solve this with our normal quadratic methods. So I'm going to subtract x from each side and add 1, and we get 0 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 10. And so what we're looking for is something that multiplies to 10 and adds to negative 7. So that would be x minus 5 and x minus 2. Which means that our answers, okay, since each of these quantities would, could possibly equal 0, we could have x being 5 or 2. 
When we go ahead and plug them in, we just need to check to make sure that they make sense. So in the first one, I would say the square root of 5 minus 1, so we get 4, is equal to 5 minus 3. And that works, because we get 2 equals 2. And the other one, we get the square root of 2 minus 1, so 1, is equal to 2 minus 3. Well, 1 doesn't equal negative 3, so that doesn't work. Meaning, we have to get rid of 2 as our possible solution. And we just have one solution here of 5. Okay, same goes for this right side problem. I'll do this one, since they're a little bit more complicated. We're going to square each side and get 7x plus 15 is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And we're going to subtract 7x, subtract 15, and get 0 is equal to x squared minus 5x minus 14. So I'm looking for something that multiplies to negative 14, adds to negative 5, and that's going to be x minus 7 and x plus 2 which means that I get solutions of x could equal 7 or negative 2. And we go ahead and plug them in because it's possible that one of these is not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to plug those in and get the square root of, well, 7 times 7 plus 15. We get 64. Does that equal 7 plus 1? And we say yes because 8 equals 8. And then we try the other one. We say the square root of 7 times negative 2, so negative 14 plus 15 is 1, is equal to negative 2 plus 1. Well, 1 doesn't equal negative 1, so that is not a solution. So our negative 2 is not a solution. 7 is our only solution. Okay? So sometimes, especially if we end up with a quadratic that we have to solve, we end up with... Um, having to have two solutions, but maybe one of them doesn't work. All right, I'm just gonna show you um, a couple more examples here. Um, something like this can also happen where maybe it's not a quadratic, but we realize that when I take the square root of x is equal to negative seven and square both sides and get x is equal to 49, if I were to plug that back in and say the square root of 49 plus five, well, that does not equal negative two which means we do not have a solution in this case, okay? Same goes for this right side one. You can try that for, your, for yourself. We're gonna do just one last word problem and then finish up this video. So it says an architect is designing a performance center. If the area of the center is 30 square decameters, what is the area of the gallery? So we're looking for the total area, meaning I need the auditorium and the gallery. So I need to multiply. Well, if I do square root of x times square root of x, I just get the area of x right here. But if I do square root of x times 6 minus root x, I'm going to get 6 root x, and I'm going to get minus x, okay? Because I have minus root x times root x, which means that I have 30, the total area of the center is equal to this 6 root x minus x plus x, which means these simplify. I just added together all the areas for auditorium and gallery. So those simplify, and we end up with 30 is equal to 6 root x. Well, I can divide by 6 on each side and get my square root alone, and then I'm going to square both sides. We end up with x is equal to 25. All right, and so it says, what is the area of the gallery? Well, we need to plug that back in and say 6 root 25 minus 25. So we have 6 times 5 minus 25. Well, that's 30 minus 25, so we have an area of 5 decameters squared for the gallery. Okay, and it says, what if the architect decreases the area of the center by a third? What is the new area of the gallery? Well, you can try that on your own, but if we're decreasing the area by a third, we just have 20 now is equal to this root x, um, or sorry, 6 root x minus x plus x, okay? And you can go ahead and try, to try and solve that, all right? I'm just gonna show you a couple other examples that you can try on your own. Get that radicand alone and square root it um, so that we can solve for x. Here's another couple. And if you want to try that 
type of gallery one again. Um, here is another example that you can try. Well, I hope this is helpful for your homework and for studying.